we're boondocking in Moab right now, so I thought it would be a good time to give an overview of our solar installation and show you what we got. Except the funny thing is it's like 100 degrees out here, so we're running our generator and we're not even using the solar right now. But anyway, if it was a little cooler, we'd definitely be using the solar. We gotta run the AC right now, so the, that's why we're running the generator. So here's what we've got. We've got 1,300 watt solar panels. So 1,300 watts total. Uh, they're about 6.25 amps each, and they're the Renogy Slim Design panel. We got them from Amazon. Um, we've got 10 gauge cable going to each one, and they're wired in parallel and they're all going to a combiner box on the roof. And then from the roof down, they go down the, the pantry wall and into the charge controller. And then from there, and that's in, that's with two gauge wire to this charge controller. And then from the charge controller to the battery bank, that's two gauge wire as well. And we have a Victron charge controller. It's the 150, 100, TR MPPT charge controller and I'm pretty happy with the setup we've got so I'll just go over why we chose everything that we went with so the panels um, I read reviews and you know did the research and everything and it seemed like a good panel I went with the 100 watt because it's a narrower design so I could fit more on the roof I, I wouldn't have been able to fit what we did if I went with like a 175 watt panel. So that's why I went with the 100 watt panels and got a good layout on the roof with that. I went with 10 gauge wire and we went with a marine duplex wire. So I did that because I wanted to run them in parallel instead of series. So in case we had any kind of shading on the panels, I could still maximize you know what we were getting from the Sun that way um, so with going parallel on all of the panels I needed a charge controller that was big enough that could handle that many amps because that's just a little over 80 amps you know with 1300 watts so I went with the Victron because I really liked the the battery monitor that we're using and that's a Victron so I, I just decided that you know we're gonna go with Victron on the charge controller too. So, and I'm really happy with it so far. So the reason I went with 13 panels is because that was pretty much all I could fit up there. And I didn't care about doing the kind of calculations like how much power are we using? And, you know, so how many panels did we need or anything like that? I basically wanted to just do as much as we could fit up there, so. 13 panels was the configuration that I could fit up there and I have the satisfaction of knowing that we maxed out the amount of solar we could do so the only other upgrade we could really do would be the battery bank and that's something I'll consider at a later time. So a lot of people on YouTube or whatever talk about you know running the AC off of the solar so I wanted to test that. We've got 1300 watts of solar. We do only have a 440 amp hour battery bank and that's for six volt lifeline batteries. So I knew that would be our biggest issue with running the AC. Cause you, I mean, it's not like you run the AC off of the solar, you run it off the batteries and the solar charges the batteries while you're doing that. So I rewired one of the ACs, the front AC, to run off of the inverter to test everything out. And the AC definitely pulls a ton of power. I mean, I did the calculations and and everything before, so I, I had an, a rough idea of how much power it would be pulling. But I wanted to see firsthand, you know, like you could do all the calculations you want, but once you test it out in the real world, that's when you can really see how it's going to go. So I rewired it and one day I ran the AC off of the batteries while the solar was charging it. And it's, 
it's just not possible right now anyway I mean first of all you need to have a, a really good day of sun to be charging the batteries that quickly as they're being depleted but overall it just takes way too much power from the batteries it was I think it was taking around 175 amps when I had the AC running so that's I mean we only have a 440 amp hour battery bank and I mean if you go 50 percent discharge then that's only 220 amp hours so it's not possible I mean I ran it for like 45 minutes and it wasn't worth it because it was just draining the batteries too quickly so at this point I'm convinced that you need like a thousand amp hours of usable battery bank to even have it be worth running the AC so I'm not worrying about that right now we've got a nice generator it's an Onan 7500 watt so if we're in areas like Moab right now where it's just 100 degrees and we're boondocking then we're just gonna run the generator and not worry about that um, ideally we're gonna be in areas where the temperatures are you know in the 70s or whatever so we won't have that issue too much but anyway AC on the batteries not possible or not worth it right now so this is the beginning stages of the solar setup on the motorhome so here's the plan I use this piece of wood make a little divider here I've got these little boss bars which I'm hoping that it's okay that they're not copper these ones are aluminum I got them from Home Depot so it's gonna go something like that and then this whole setup is gonna rest inside this big junction box that I have and I'll have the I've got two gauge wire coming in on each side here into these big connectors there and then the, the 10 gauge wire going to each panel it's going to be all in there and I've got 13 so there's 13 screws there and I've got these waterproof um, strain relief connectors here and I'll have 13 of them coming in around as I need them around the side there and it, this junction box came with waterproof gasket and a nice lid for it so this is the start Up on the roof mounting the combiner box now so I've got it positioned with my wires coming out this is two gauge wire and this is the spot it's gonna go in so now I'm gonna take it off clean the roof put a bead of dike for on the back there drill some holes in get it permanently mounted wiring up the panels right now so you can see you've got heat shrink right there that's going to be the finished part of this and then you've got the wiring here that I'm hooking up to these heat shrink butt connectors and this is my 10 gauge wire it's marine cable you can see right here duplex round marine cable it's got that stuffing in there to keep it round and that's what fits those connectors right there so I already started on one panel right there I've just got that resting right there I'm just gonna connect all the wiring for all these panels and then put the brackets on all of them set them all in place and then start mounting them.
the solar panel installation is finally complete. We have 13 panels, 100 watts each.